Good morning. Welcome to the XM.com weekly market update. And we're joined again by Peter McGuire, the CEO of XM. Good morning, Pete. Good morning, Andrew. We'll get into the numbers again. Not yeah. too much happening on the home front this week. So we've got retail sales out later today and the CPI number out tomorrow. But yeah. first of all, we'll just look at the Aussie dollar coming under a bit of pressure um, still. Yeah. Pretty much looking at those interest rate differentials between the US and Australia, really. Exactly right. And, you know, it's 65, 66 cents is the handle. And it seems to be just playing in that sort of zone. It, it, it's still moving. There's no shortage as far as movement, but nothing dramatic like we've seen in the yen of recent weeks or the pound. Yeah. So I, I guess it'll be interesting after the CPI number tomorrow to see what yeah. effect that will have on the dollar. So we'll just wait for that one to come out. Yeah. Well, you're going to see what it's going to run. Yeah. Is it going to be a good news story like the Japanese or a bad news story like the POMs? Well, that's right. Japan, that CPI dropped 1%, yeah. which when you look at what's happening around the globe, that's a, it's a big drop. Yes, it is. Well, when you look at the metric, I mean, it's 25% from uh, in the sense of the size of the fall, but yeah, one percent is a monstrous move to the downside. Yeah, so it's um, they won't be putting up interest rates anytime soon. No, you, with you Mr. Ueda, the new um, he comes into play. I think start of next week, mm. uh, Governor Ueda from Bank of Japan, and I think he's got an easy task ahead of him. Karuda like says uh, sayonara and uh, konnichiwa for Mr. Ueda. That's it. The end though. We're yeah. at the 130 and a half mark, so yeah. that's, that's what has been struggling a bit too. Yeah, well, you can see what it, mm. I mentioned earlier, that March number where we've seen a high, that's you know that nearly at 137, 138, mm. and now at 130. They're just dramatic moves. And what we've seen since really the start of the year has been spectacular for currency traders, for the Japanese yen. If you only traded one market, that's the market to trade. Yeah, well, the, the chart tells a story, doesn't it? Sure plenty does. Of, uh, plenty of movement there. Oh, no shortage. Huge. UK. On yeah. the other hand, UK CPI went up slightly, which yeah. they wouldn't have been too happy about considering it's already above 10%. Exactly. Well, they were all analysts and all the expectations. That's why it's so hard to hit. And, you know, I get phone calls. What's it, what do you think it's going to be? I don't even put a hat in the ring because you can be out mm. and made to look foolish. And everyone was saying that we're going to see um, inflation drop. It's going to be, you know, a continuation from that slide down and it just... Um, yeah, went the other way. So yeah, and if you look at that chart, it's quite sticky around that. Yeah, that um, ten plus. Uh, yeah, it is. So it's be interesting if they can get that under what, control. And what the issue is, you've got to go back to that April twenty two because that's a year on year number, mm. um, and you've already had a bigger uptick as far as April twenty two inflation where it was, and so that move to the upside ten percent up from there is a dramatic number. As this goes forward, if we still are above the tens and you're now at July to October bandwidth, then that's not a good sign. Mm. Now, I suspect uh, interest rates will be going up in the UK again, as they did last week. So. Yeah, now, and, and with the ECB. That's right. So the Fed futures are sort of interesting. Like It's a bit of a busy chart, but that light yeah. blue line is effectively where we are now. So, yes. But if you look out, the, the dark blue one at the bottom there, that is the expectation of where... Um, they think rates will be in December of this year. So obviously that's nine months away, but that's yes. effectively saying the rates would be anywhere between 25 and half a percent lower mm. by the end of the year. Okay. Well, um, strap yourself in. It's going to be a bumpy ride till then. It is. And once again, the futures market, you know, it can change very quickly. Very quickly. Yes, yes. So NASDAQ. It's been a bit of a, uh, a standout this year so yeah. far. There's first three months, you've got to say that first quarter's been outstanding for mm, it. Yeah, it's been good. And obviously, what's happened in the last couple of weeks with the mm. banks, so obviously mm. that's affected the, uh, the S&P and the Dow more so than yeah. the NASDAQ. But certainly there was a bit of a flight to safety last week, the money flowing back into those big tech stocks. Exactly. And uh, yeah, as you, you were saying off here, you know, their cash reserves are just larger than countries' GDPs. Um, but, you know, the, the NASDAQ was nearly down half of a percent overnight mm -hmm. and we had the Dow up 0.6. So, yes, you, you're certainly seeing plenty of move across, plenty of movement across US equities. Well, well that's what it seems like. It's, <coughs> like. it's like a bit of money came out of tech and moved into the banks overnight. Yeah. So, But uh, the banks, are they out of trouble yet? Who knows? Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Well, I can't this. speculate. I know who's in trouble. It's mm. certainly Janet Yellen. <laughs> she, can't get a, she can't get a story right. No, they need a bit of consistency, I think. So the yeah. inconsistency is what the markets do not like. Do not want. No way. 
Once again, we've had a look at this chart the last few weeks. This is the US 10s and the US 2s, yeah. which gives us a really good guide. And the 2s, are, they both actually jumped up a bit overnight. Yeah, so, had a bounce. But, but you look at that, the red is the two-year chart. The high, it was about 5.1%, and that's, that's going right. back probably only... A couple of weeks. Yeah, five weeks maybe. It's now just over 4%. So, yeah. um, but I think, once again, the futures market and the bond market are they saying we're either at the top of the rate cycle or very close to it? Yep. Well, we'll we've got to work through it yet, and uh, you might be right. And I've just got to see where that inflation number drops. Mm. That's the that's the concern to Jay Powell and his gang, because if he he's more or less hand on heart, if he hasn't got it under control, it's just onward and upward. Mm. Yeah. And that's what the worrying thought is. Yeah. Well, that's right. If, if it does start creeping up and getting sticky, then clearly. I, rates will go up. Yeah, and another point overnight, you saw gold come back yesterday, a big washout, and then all of a sudden it's moved in late trade this morning in, in New York. But the price of energy, w, West Texas Intermediate crude was up five odd percent, Brent was up four and a bit percent, yeah. big moves, massive moves. So we just don't want energy prices back at 80 to 85 or 90 bucks US an hour, a yeah, barrel. That's right. Finally, we've talked. We talk about inflation a lot, obviously, because it's such a key number at the moment mm. in a lot of the economies. But here's mm. a chart. We talk about food inflation. To, to all our viewers, please study that. Yeah, so it certainly puts into context where we're talking CPI rates of five, six, seven, eight percent type thing. Yeah. And yet, I know um, some of these are, are not developed economies, but that's. Well, Turkey certainly mm. is. I've mm. been to I, Turkey. I've correct. I've only been to. Uh, one of those countries, that's Turkey, I've spent a bit of time in, only for a week or two, uh, in Istanbul, magnificent city, and, uh, you know, it's first world. It's mm. great technology, infrastructure, medical, uh, you name it, and wonderful culture and food, but that gives you an indication. 77% move to the upside over a year, that's and poor people in Zimbabwe. This is criminal. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, it's a food basket, Africa. Why, yeah. why the hell have they need, you know, inflation at that high? Someone's doing something, Andrew. Yeah, no, it's hard to get your head around, but it's, yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's unfortunate. There's no doubt about that, but it's, uh, yeah, crazy numbers. They are crazy numbers. I mean, and when you look at that Suriname, they're, they're bread baskets of the world in a lot of ways. They're agricultural, rich, Haiti, Rwanda, Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's, you know, great rainfall and fantastic agricultural lands. It just seems, it seems very strange. I think it's the, the government in Sing uh, Sri Lanka has probably got a fair bit of uh, mm. blame put on them, particularly I in recent times. So. Yeah, all, yep. all, all the drama that's been going in there recently. But anyway, it was just an interesting oh, chart yeah. to finish off. So, um, But we'll keep an eye on things we, over the next couple of weeks with the, oh, yeah. the stats and whatnot. So. Yeah, absolutely. So we don't want that number to climb. That's one number from mankind to mankind. You, want, you don't wish harm on people. No. And that is... You know, you're starting to feel that now. People are saying to you in Sydney, you know, a dozen eggs are costing X and price of everything. So we've we've been hit hard with inflation here. Mm. Yeah, no, certainly in the media, that's for sure. So anyway, thanks for joining us again. Good to see you. Great, thanks, Pete. Thank you, Andrew. And that's the XM.com weekly market update.